Reserved instances in Azure might sound like something that's going to be limiting you in a lot of ways, or that it's only for big environments, but it's actually really, really flexible, and it's something that you should consider right from the start. Reserving capacity does save you a lot of money, and it does not necessarily put restraints on you in, in terms of limiting how you can change your environments. So let's see how all this works, shall we? If you didn't know by now, I do stream from time to time over at twitch.tv, links down below. And uh, you can catch me there live if you want to see me uh, do Azure stuff, PowerShell stuff, want to talk about uh, stuff like that, or if you just want to quietly lurk. All right, back to reservations. If you've been Googling it and uh, reading the docs, you've probably seen the save up to 80% with a reserved instance and hybrid benefit line. And yeah, you can save that amount of money, but it's really a best case scenario. Still, with reservations alone, you can still save up to 20 to 40 percent. When talking about reservations in Azure, it's easy to think about just virtual machines. And that's where it all started. But these days you can get reservations for a lot of other services as well, uh, like app services, uh, blob storage, uh, VMware solutions, Azure files and so on. How flexible the reservations are varies from service to service. For example, if you purchase reservations for blob storage, the only choices you have in size are 100 terabytes or 1 petabyte. And uh, while uh, Azure files have a choice from 10 terabytes to 100 terabytes. On the other side of the scale, you have Cosmos DB, which uh, you can purchase reservations for either 5000 request units or in steps up to 5 million request units. Reservations can be purchased for one-year terms or in three-year terms, but it's also possible for some services to have five-year terms. They are most often paid for on a monthly basis, but you can also pay upfront if you prefer that. They are billed towards your default payment method in the subscription where you purchase them, meaning that if you have a pay-to-go subscription that is paid for by credit card, that credit card is billed immediately if you prefer the upfront method or alongside your monthly consumption if you go for monthly payments. If you have a subscription that is prepaid, then the reservation cost is deducted from the prepaid sum. But if you have a CSP subscription, you would have to go to your partner in order to purchase a reservation and then they will bill you as they see fit. Even though reservations are at least for one year at a time, you are not locked in for that entire period. In fact, up until now, Microsoft has not been charging early termination fees for reservations, but they do state that sometime in the future they may be starting to charge 12% early termination fees for reservations. That means that you can cancel your reservation and still get a refund. Uh, it's limited up to $50,000 for a rolling 12 months period. And there are some limitations as to which services you can get a refund from. For example, uh, Azure Databricks and VMware solutions are not eligible for a refund. And it's also worth mentioning that if you cancel a reservation, all future canceled payments will count up towards that $50,000 limit. Often though, it would be preferable to exchange your reservation or reservations into new reservations. Those new reservations would then have their own new term starting from the time of exchange. That means if you have a single three-year reservation that you have had for a year and you exchange that for a new three-year reservation, that new reservation would last for three years. There's currently no limits or fees on exchanges, but the new reservations that you exchange for needs to have a lifetime commitment that is equal or larger than the remaining commitment on the reservations that you are turning in. That might be hard to wrap your head around, so take this simple example. You have a three year reservation for $100 a month. That's a lifetime commitment of $3,600. If then after six months you want to exchange that reservation, you would have paid $600, leaving a remain, remaining commitment for that reservation of $3,000. That means that the new reservations that you want to exchange to would have to have a lifetime commitment of at least $3,000. And that means that if we want a one year reservation, we would reserve, want to reserve at least $250, totaling $3,000, or a three year reservation for at least $84, totaling, totaling the lifetime commitment of the same $3,000. Keep in mind though that 
the new reservation will have its own term regardless of how all the reservations you are turning in are. Now that we've covered refunds and exchanges and seen how much flexibility they provide us, let's see how we can actually use reservations because there's some pretty good flexibility there as well. Reservations are not tied to a single resource like a virtual machine, for example. Instead, they are tied to a scope. You can choose from three different scopes, either shared, single subscription or a single resource group. The shared option provides coverage for every eligible subscription in the billing context, meaning quite often the entire tenant. The single subscription option provides coverage for a single subscription and the resource group for a single resource group. The reservation will then cover consumption of its own kind within that scope and it can do so either entirely or in part. If, for example, you have a reservation for a D4 virtual machine, you can use that to cover a, an entire D4 virtual machine or half a D8 virtual machine. And it can also cover multiple resources if there are consumption left in the reservation, meaning that the same D4 reservation can cover two D2 virtual machines and so on. One thing that is pretty obvious is that a reservation can only cover the same type of service that it is, meaning that an app service reservation cannot be used to cover a virtual machine, for example. But within each type of service, there are also some limitations. For example, if you have a reservation for an isolated app service, that cannot be used to cover a premium app service. And for example, a reservation for a D series virtual machine cannot be used to cover an F series virtual machine. So let's take an example of how you can use reservations to cover your virtual machines. Say you have an environment with six virtual machines consisting of two D8 virtual machines, one D16 virtual machine, two F2 virtual machines and one F4 virtual machine. Here we can go down the easy peasy road and just buy reservations for each virtual machine, meaning you purchase two D8 uh, reservations, one D16, two F2 reservations and one F4 reservation, totaling a number of six reservations. That would cover all of your consumption and you will be good to go. An alternative to this is to purchase one D32 reservation and one F8 reservation, totaling two reservations, and by that also covering all your consumption needs. In both cases, you would save about 32% on the D-series virtual machines and about 41% on the F-series virtual machines if you go for a one-year reservation and even more if you go for a three-year reservation. So as you can see, using reservations in Azure is not only going to be saving you a bunch of money, it's also surprisingly flexible. And I wouldn't worry too much about always utilizing 100% of your reservations, because even though you're not using all of your reservations all of the time, you are still going to be able to save quite a lot of money as compared to pay-as-you-go prices. If this video provided you some insights or knowledge, I would appreciate a like and a follow. And if there are topics that you want me to cover in these videos, please leave a comment down below and I will uh, see what I can do. And uh, yeah, see ya.